you are just here for Chick-fil-A, welcome. Uh, this is called the Make the Time Bible Study. There's a, a friend of mine who's a camp director at a camp called Pine Cove, and for years he would post on his Instagram story to make the time for God's Word. And just a super simple picture of the Bible with, uh, with make the time on the screen, and that kind of set, set a, a marker in me that I wanted to do the same thing on social media as well. And long after he has stopped doing it, I have continued doing that as well. And it's not to uh, say, hey, look at me and that I'm reading my Bible. Uh, it's to hopefully encourage you guys that, hey, God's word is important for us as Christians, as believers. Uh, and so in a world that it's so hard to um, be distracted, so easy to be distracted by other things, we got to make time for God's word uh, in our lives because it's, it's the truth. Um, it's the way that we, it, it's, it's, his, it's his rule book for us to live uh, even, even today, even 2,000 years after it was written. Uh, it's still our rule book for today. So we're going to have a few passages, and we're going to kind of have a, a general theme every classic Bible study. And the theme this year, the title, is The Lake is Not Your Church. And, and I, I've, I've thought about how to, tap, how to tactfully say that as, 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 good, as nice as possible, um, because it's something, in the, the other phrase is the woods of my church, or the deer stand is my church. And I've heard that phrase for years and years, and it, it makes me incredibly sad because that's not in Scripture. Now, we're going to talk about some passages that kind of uh, aid in the reason for why people say that. But my challenge this morning is to, for us as, as believers, not just here at Bassmaster Classic, but beyond, to pursue biblical community and live a worshipful life on mission in the outdoors. Um, so church attendance is down across the country, really regardless of age group. Uh, on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday afternoon, um, in, in Bible studies, churches are dying across the country. And so if we want to live out the Great Commission that Jesus laid out for us, which is to go and make disciples, something needs to change in that statistic. So let's pray this morning that uh, that would be the case. Father God, we come before you just grateful, uh, God, that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins, God, so we can know you. Um, we pray that as I speak this morning and, and scripture is read, that, God, your Holy Spirit would, would poke it at the hearts of people this morning and, and convict of sin, um, and, God, you would lead us to um, a life that more reflects you. God, we know we can never get there, uh, but we ask that uh, you'd help us this morning. So lead us and guide us. Um, God, we love you and trust you. Amen. So, who's, so there were some laughs when I said that phrase. Who's heard that phrase before? Yeah, or just like, the outdoors is my church. Is that, Blake, is that, is that prevalent in the outdoor industry? It is. It, it, it's definitely more with the New Age movement. Yes. And it was more even in the Jay Yellow's time and stuff like that. Even is it really? So it's, not, so it's not a new thing. It's no. been around for a while. No, not the new understanding. And, and, and I feel like that kind of reflects the phrase, I'm not religious, I'm, what is it? Spiritual. And again, I'm not, I'm not sure if everybody that says that says it from a, a negative standpoint like they, they hate the church or they hate religious organization but I think we mostly at least now in my in my experience because of COVID and technology it's become so easy to be spiritual but not religious but we know in scripture that there are spirits in this world that if you're just spiritual your your mind and your body can be uh, beholden to the wrong spirits and so I want to encourage us this morning that biblical community matters and it's, and it's worth pursuing and it's worth fighting for uh, in the outdoor industry especially. So I'm going to give some validity real quick, though, to that statement. But, of course, there's a challenge on the back half. So who had Psalm 19, 1 through 6? All right. Read aloud, Nordby. All right. Psalm 19, 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Yeah, that's great. Can we get the music turned off? Appreciate it, buddy. Um, so in that passage especially, that's one that, a fantastic passage, I love that. The skies, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And so in that, 
that's when I hear people say, oh, I don't go to church. You know, I'm, I, I'm not a, I, someone told me this one time, I'm not a Bible person, I hear from God in nature. Which, reading that passage is not necessarily anti-biblical. Like, we, we, it says in Romans that, that creation reveals who God is to us. So, so without words, as it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. So that's not necessarily wrong to think that, but there's a second half to what David wrote in that psalm. So do you have the second half? Yes. So read verses 7 through 14. Okay. Uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure, than, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Uh, forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servants also from within uh, willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Yeah. So can anybody can anybody point out what the difference between the first half of that chapter and the second half of that chapter is? Just kind of thematically. Anybody got it? Did not hear it all the way? Y'all need to just read it again? First half. Heavens declare, and you're good. Um, second half. Uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. For who can discern their own errors and forgive my hidden faults? Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me, that I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. So what's the difference between those two halves of the chapter? It's the decrees and statutes and precepts and the things the Lord has told us are what direct us, because we can't be directed directing our own self or will fail. Correct. Yeah. So the creation shows us his majesty that's not we're not commanded by creation what to do God commands us not. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I was I was looking at this and I think David looks he looks two places in this passage. He looks up and then he looks down. He looks up at creation and sees the glory and the majesty and I think that's where a lot of the people that say the the, the lake is my church. That's fantastic. They look up. They see the glory of God. But there's a second half to it, and that is that the law of the Lord is perfect. That it is more. It sounds like he's describing like a, an all-exclusive paid trip to El Salto. More precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. If that's how King David sees the law of the Lord, the words that God has written for us to live our lives, then isn't that something that we should be pursuing? And so that leads us to... Some scripture that I think is, is full of examples for that next step in our journey. Maybe you're a, a newer believer and you look at, at nature and you're like, yeah, there's got to be more to, to life than, than just me living it. Uh, and you, you become a follower of Jesus and, and you kind of wonder what that next step looks like. And, and for me, and I'll kind of talk about my story a little later, but biblical community, whether it's church on a Sunday or finding community with other believers, has been a huge part of my story. And that's what I want to uh, help us understand this morning. So we had... There were three things that I want to say about biblical community. There is a lie of biblical community that I think especially the devil wants us uh, to, to, to believe. There's a truth of biblical community, and then there's the application for us going forward. So the lie is that I don't need the church, and the church doesn't need me. And I think especially it's so easy practically to see that because all of our churches during COVID got great cameras and great live streams. And the, they, they, they tuned the auto-tune up on the worship leader, and so he sounds better than ever, and you're like, he wasn't that good before. And so it's so, it's so easy to see. 
I, I don't know if they did that to me or not, but um, they, uh, that's fun. Um, and, and then it's so easy now just to attend online. Oh, we're, we're tired this morning. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't see my friends there anymore anyways. Nobody else goes. Uh, you know, the church doesn't need me, and I don't need the church. Like, I can, I can, do, my, I can do Christianity by myself. And I think isolation, especially post-COVID, uh, breeds hidden sin. It breeds uh, sadness and depression. And I mean, you look at the the host of issues that we have nowadays, and I think the declining church is a, a huge part of that. So, we're going to have Romans twelve four through eight, loud and proud. I got that. Yeah. Now, as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to the standard of one's faith. If service and in service, if teaching and teaching, if exhorting and exhortation, giving with generosity, leading with diligence, showing mercy with cheerfulness. Yeah. So who can tell me what that passage says about the church? Besides, well, I guess you can talk. <laughs> it, it needs every one of us because we're all made differently. Yeah. And we're all made for the same purpose, but for a different part of that purpose. Exactly. Who else got? Yeah. I, I also believe that after being bombarded by the world all week, it's where we go back with like minded people to re restructure, regroup, and regrow. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's the cool thing about the, the physical embodiment of the church. Now, I'm sure some of y'all heard this. There's the big C church, and then there's the little C church. So this morning, I'm not necessarily talking about it has to be the little C church, which is I go to Onward Community Church. Where do you go? Well, huh? The well. The well. Where do you go? Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Uh, about B- B- Boyden Presbyterian, whatever it's called. So that's the little C church. But the big C church, which is the body of believers, meets at that place. They meet on, at someone's house on a, a Monday night. They meet at Chick-fil-A at the Bassmaster Classic. That is what I'm talking about as a whole, the big C church. And I think that's what, that's what the writer here was talking about here. Like I look at this list of, of ways that God blesses people to, to encourage the body. And uh, we have different gifts. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If it's a serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. I look at those. I'm not all of those. I'm, I'm some of those sometimes, but I'm not great at all those all the time. But that's why we gather together, because we are each made at a specific time for a specific purpose um, in, the, in the body of Christ. So, you had something back there? Your verse reminds me of another one of my favorite books of Corinthians. Speak it up. It reminded me of another verse from Corinthians. Yeah. This is verse Corinthians, or sorry. Yeah, first Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twelve. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. Yeah. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. Yeah. Exactly. So we all have like, our parts and we all make up the body of Christ. Exactly. Exactly. Drew, you look like you were you were brewing up something. Oh, I just really enjoyed reading that verse. Yeah, great, cool. Um so that was Romans twelve. And I think the, if the lie was that the church doesn't need me and I don't need the church, again, if King David loves the precepts of the Lord and they're, they're better than pure gold, and this tells us that each one is made for a purpose, then that totally disproves that lie. That, that, as a matter of fact, the church does need you. If you're a believer in Christ, you're a follower of God, there's a purpose for you to be with other believers. And that is to encourage or to teach or to lead or to give. Um, so the next thing is the truth. Our best way to witness to a watching world is to be together and to love one another. And so, who had Acts 2, 42 through 47? Loud and proud. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Yeah. 
And that is a description of the early church. So when Jesus was crucified, resurrected, and ascended, this was the earliest believers. And the area they lived in was a very pagan area. And so their behavior was, was a total shock to those around them. There was a, uh, I'm, I'm live on YouTube, but I wish I could look at it. Uh, there was a, a quote I had on my phone that was uh, from some historian, and he said that they, they lived their life in such a way that it shocked the world around them that they had to pay attention, and that's why the they're, they're, they're Lord added to their number those who are being saved every day, because they lived their life so much in community. Now, this verse is also used by uh, socialist people trying to say that we should all sell everything and make everything equal. That's not what this verse is saying. This verse is saying that they were so involved and so um, devoted to the pursuit of advancing the gospel that my money doesn't matter. My possessions don't matter. This is all for the sake of Christ. And when we live our life that way, again, none of these people were alone. I'm going to read that again. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Now, that doesn't mean that they all liked the same stuff. They all had the same job. They all had the same amount of kids. Their, their kids all played the same sports. But they had everything in common in terms of what they believed, what mattered. They sold property, possessions to give in need. And I, I love this one here. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Biblical community doesn't have to be sitting in a pew. I think that's a great way to do it. But it says they broke bread. They had dinner together. They had, they had well, they probably wish they had Chick Fil A together, but they, they, they didn't have Chick Fil A. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, but, but that was, that was a way that they were able to get together and encourage one another um, by just having dinner, by having food. And so, the, I, I kind of wanted to say that over my life, I've experienced this in so many ways. I had a group of guys that I had discipleship group with Sunday nights from 7th grade to 12th grade. And we got together. We broke bread. We encouraged one another. We opened scripture. We, we, we uh, exposed sin and we prayed over one another. And it was some of the coolest times of my entire life. And that kind of set a trajectory for why I think this is so important um, in my life and why I hope it is for you guys as well. So that was the, the lie, the truth, and now the application. The Christian is not encouraged but commanded to engage in biblical community. So we have uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 15. Super loud. So it says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong or so wrong. But always trust to do what is good for each other. Yeah. I can read that again if we need to, but any 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 ideas there, just kind of list some of those things out that Paul here encourages this church to engage in when they when they have biblical community. If not, I can I can read it out again. We've got um and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and everyone else. And then it keeps going. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And so I, I, I just don't think there can be a, a clearer description of what biblical community looks like. And again, I don't, ha I don't say that has to be on a Sunday morning. That can be here in this place. That can be now this place only once a year. And so if this is your biblical community, man, I'm glad you're here. Uh, but I, I want to encourage you to find that elsewhere. And so I think there's a few things that community does. One, it identifies needs. So in 14 to 15, it says here that encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. I'm sure you guys can think about some time where somebody in your family or in your community has needed to be encouraged. Whether a, a family member died or just or something something's going wrong in their life. Like I'm sure that you've been encouraging. Um, uh, what's the guy who has a daughter with cancer? 
Bottom yes. Bottom yeah, Miles Berghoff. Like, I'm sure the fishing industry has surrounded him right now because he has biblical community. I can't imagine how his, him and his family would feel if the lake was their church. <laughs> they, they, they believe that? Yeah. They are not believers. They're not believers. Got it. I, I, I thought they were. Okay. Well, then I'm glad you're there to encourage them. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, Joey is there. And Mark. And, yeah, and Mark Rose is there to encourage them. But that, that's somebody, I just, yeah, I didn't know that. That they are going through a really tough time right now, and they, they that, that's the, the belief they hold. And so we, we hopefully can pray for them and encourage them and, and, and challenge them in that. And so if, if biblical community identifies needs and helps solve them, biblical community also pushes past discomfort. Who is here in your small groups has had an uncomfortable conversation with somebody? Yeah. But did that lead to a closer bond of community? Yeah, it does. And so here it says, I mean, this is, this is tough. And we encourage you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. That those of us who are, again, there's, there's, we all go through phases like this in our, in our walk and in our faith. But it says idle and disruptive. So who, can, who, who has a thought of what idle and disruptive might mean in your walk with Christ? I guess there's kind of two separate words. Idle, I think idle is, is somebody who maybe just kind of goes through the motions. You mean lukewarm? Yeah, yeah. lukewarm. Yeah. Lukewarm, complacent, yeah. And if, if someone's idle and disruptive, <laughs> I've got a few people in, in the community over the years that were, that were quite disruptive. Um, and so it says to warn those, but the, 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 the verse doesn't end after that. It's not a fire and brimstone you who do bad things and don't show up to community and, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we pray, pray for the sin and, and you give no effort to, to, to overcome the sin, you know, whatever. It says make sure that we encourage the disheartened. So if people are, are idle and disruptive in their faith, we don't discourage them. I, 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 I'm on social media a lot. That's how all of you guys are here. And I see the phrase, there's no hate like Christian love. And it, it pains me, one, because I, I haven't experienced that, but I know there's people out there, and that's a huge reason why our statistics for church are so low, and that is because whether you have experienced that or you've heard of people experiencing that called church hurt, that man, Christians are, are judgmental. The Bible calls them not to judge, but Christians are the most judgy people out there. And so if that's why people are leaving the church, they're not feeling that from us, then maybe some, at some points we're the ones who are being idle and disruptive. We're not digging into God's word. We're not understanding what he says. Because if that phrase is true for me, then woe is me. Tear my clothes, sackcloth and ashes. Like, that, that, that is not how I want to live my life. And if my community is not uh, warning me when I'm being that way, then what are we doing? And so that is why I think this is so crucial to do, is that if the, if the world is watching and how Christians act and behave. And we claim to have the good news of the gospel, and we live our lives out in a way that is not reflective of that whatsoever, then what are we doing? And so that's why, again, can you find that in the tree stand? No. Can you find that on the lake? No, you can't. As, as outdoorsmen, we love the lake. The heavens declare the glory of God. Nature shows us who God is, but Scripture shows us how to witness to other people. And so that, that is, that is what I'm, I'm so passionate about this morning. Um, you know, community, um, there's kind of a second half to this here. Community, though, is not the goal of the Christian. Community is the tool to prepare us for the return of Christ. So in verse 22, um, again, Paul's writing to a very early church, uh, very young in their faith church here. And it says here, may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Sanctify means to just day by day make you more holy. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. So if you've placed your faith and trust in Christ and you want to follow him, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. He will prepare your heart for the coming of Christ. And so biblical community is not the goal but it is something that we use. It's something that God has, has, has used, has, has, has uh, invented for us to, to, to get to know him more. Again, we don't read scripture because it's old. We don't read scripture. Uh, we don't make the time 
because it, it, it's, it's cool the fact that there's a bunch of different authors over you know, 2,000 years that wrote this thing. We read this because we love the one who wrote it. We read this because we love the God who inspired these words. And so in biblical community, we get together, we open God's word, we read it, and that's why I love this time this morning. But I want to encourage us not to just find it here. So whether you believe that statement that the woods or the lake is your church, or you're just in a, a stage right now where, man, I can't find anybody in my town that believes the same thing as me, um, you don't always have to. So, yes, biblical community is, is ideally happens on a Sunday morning, and also, you know, you get together with people that are in your, your age group or your, your stage of life. But I have experienced such cool community over the past few years. Um, Ethan and Lexi are a couple that have just encouraged my wife and I so much. They, uh, they're subscribers from Iowa. He invited me to stay at his house one time. And uh, I didn't cry last year, but I'll cry this year, I guess. And uh, as me and my wife have gone through hard things and had a baby heart issue a few weeks ago, just having their community with us, encouraging us from Iowa, has been amazing to see. And we don't have Bible study together. We see each other two to three times a year. Um, but that is what is, is, can be found in biblical community. Is that if you know Christ and you find others that know him in your town, on social media, whatever the deal is, it is so enriching to our souls and encouraging to us. And, and I can just tell you from experience, it has been for me. Whether it's 7th to 12th grade with the same guys for years. Whether it's living with those guys in college and having intentional conversations we're now having people like him, people like Aaron throughout the years, um, encouraging myself and, and my wife in, in our faith, and hopefully we do the same thing as well. That is the way that we grow in our faith. That's the way that we show the world around us the love of Christ. And I'm not, I'm not trying to prove a point. I, I just, I've seen how the Lord works in biblical community, and I want that for you guys as well. Um, and so you may be sitting here this morning, and you're like, man, that sounds really cool. Sure, I... You know, maybe maybe you are the type of person that's like, church. I've got church hurt. Somebody somebody uh, hurt me at, at, at the church that I went to, and the pastor was mean. I didn't feel included, and so you kind of walked away from the church. I want to invite you to come back. And if you have, if you're if you're if you're watching right now, or you're listening in this in this room, and you're thinking, man, I don't know if I have that. Either either you don't know if you have. A, a, a community of believers or you don't even know if you have the desire, the, not necessarily the desire to, you don't know if you have Christ in your life, then I would say do not leave this place this morning, do not leave this live stream without calling somebody, without talking to me, talking to Blake, talking to anybody in this room about what that looks like. I want to walk through a very simple passage in Romans, from several different passages in Romans, called the Romans Road. And this is a very easy way to understand the gospel and what Christ did on our behalf. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Anybody in here perfect? No, oh, no hands going up. Good, I figured. I figured. If you are, we can, we can, meet, we can meet tomorrow morning. It's a Sunday. There's probably people in church tomorrow morning. Uh, for we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is, that is the, uh, the reality of us as, as humans. That we were, we're not, we're not perfect people. Whether it's lying or stealing or cheating or putting fish in a basket and taking them to weigh in. I hope none of us have done that before, but some people have. Um, is that we are not perfect people. And so because of that, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Because God is a perfect God, he can be nowhere near sin. And when sin was brought into the world, it separated us from God. That doesn't mean that you sin right now and you die immediately. In the Bible, that happens sometimes. And that, back in the Old Testament, that was grim. Um, but if the wages of sin, is, as far as eternity, is death, there's got to be a good side, and there is. That is the gift of, the gift of eternal life can be found in God. And so in Romans 5, 8, it says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So I don't care where you're at this morning. I don't care what, if you're watching on YouTube this morning. I don't care what your life looks like where you've been, what kind of uh, stuff you're involved with, what kind of stuff you're addicted to, um, no matter how much uh, raising canes you eat. I'm just kidding, that's not a sin. I'm hoping the Chick-fil-A guy would get that. Um, I was just throwing some, uh, some uh, shade at raising canes real quick. Um, 
that the, that was I was off topic. I'm sorry. Um, that that God that God man, see, I just derailed the whole thing. Now. It uh, that that no matter what you've done, that Christ died for you. And so, if I can find this page real quick, I lost it. Give me a second here. Where'd it go? Oh well, I don't need that. I got it. I got it. I can share. I can share the gospel with that. With that, the last passage we got there, um, and so in, later on in Romans it says that if we confess, uh oh, thank you. If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that Christ raised Him from the dead, then we can be saved. It is as it is as simple as that. So if we want not only to live a life of freedom from sin, if we want to live a life of community with other believers. It is as easy as that. I don't care what you've done. I'm, I'm watching on YouTube here in this room. I don't care where your life is at. There is a God who loves you, who cares for you, who created you, and he wants you to not just sit in the tree stand, not just sit on the lake and be in awe of his, of his, of his, of his creation he's made. He wants you to understand who he is on a deeper level, which David said the precepts and the law of the Lord are sweeter than pure gold. And so if that's the case, then... Man, I, I encourage us this morning to not leave this place without deciding to follow Jesus in this moment. And so I'm excited uh, to see the fruits that come from this. Maybe it won't happen until eternity, but um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to stand in front of you and not... I, I was telling Taylor this earlier. I don't get nervous to talk about fishing. I don't get nervous to talk about uh, to, to lead worship because the screen says the lyrics and the chords are on my iPad. And so there's, there's nothing uh, nervous there, but... As I talk about the love of Christ who's impacted my life, I get a little more nervous because I feel like the stakes are a little higher. But I, I, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you guys about something that is life or death. Your eternity hinges on the decision that you make sometime in your life to follow Christ or not follow Christ. That's why I pray for us this morning in the outdoor industry specifically. Whether you're fishing on a middle school tournament, high school tournament, you fish pro tournaments, or you fish no tournaments like me. Uh, or you work in a, 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 a whatever kind of plant Ethan works at, manufacturing of some kind, uh, that there is a, a way for you to reflect Christ in your life. Um, and I want that for all of us. And so I want to see revival in the outdoor industry. I want to see revival in the fishing industry. And I hope that God can, uh, can use this as a, as a small part of that. So let's pray. Father God, we are grateful for your son. We are grateful that God, through him and through faith in him, we may approach you with freedom and confidence, as it says in Scripture. God, those two words, freedom and confidence. Now, there's no, there's, no, there's no boundary to knowing you. There's no boundary to finding community with other believers. God, there's only confidence. There's freedom and confidence in that. No boundaries. So we pray for uh, hearts in this place, hearts watching online and on the replay. God, that they would feel that this, this morning that they would decide to follow you with their lives because, God, it is worth it. It is worth it to follow you. Your, your precepts are good. Your law is wise. God, allow us to get rid of the thought that just being in nature is enough. God, that, that is great. We love you. We praise you for the, for, the, for the work that you've done creating what seems impossible in nature. The intricacies of the world and of of, of the galaxy, God, is just awestruck. But God, allow us to understand that you can do a work in our hearts that seems impossible as well. So, Father, we pray for that. We pray for revival in this fishing industry. Um, and we pray that people would not leave this place without talking to somebody, finding community, calling somebody up and say, hey, I've been struggling with this. God, we pray for that this morning. We love you. We trust you. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Tyler, can we read one more? Yes, what you got? Yeah. I'd love to share this uh, in light of what he has shared, uh, Tyler shared this topic yesterday. He didn't share all of his uh, message with me, but I was, I was studying last night briefly, and I thought I was encouraged by this. And so, you know, before we you leave, I feel that this is encouraging. Yeah. Uh, Speak Hebrews, up a little bit. Hebrews 10, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another, one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, yeah. as, is the hab, as is the habit of some, but yeah. encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing. Yeah. So just as we go out. Let us not forget. Today and yeah. Any day, we may just remember to 
encouraging one another to be faithful to Yeah. Faithful. Exactly. Yeah, love it. Well, hey, thanks for coming. We got more biscuits for y'all to take on the road. Uh, Nor- Norby's got something as well. Let's do it. Yeah, kind of along with that, encouraging each other, building each other up. We are here as believers to do that. And whether that's all of us meeting together or the church community meeting together or one-on-one or, or just a couple buddies meeting together is super important. Uh, just last night on the drive here with my buddy Tyler in there, we were talking about our faith and we hadn't seen each other in a couple of years and, and just sharing like some struggles and opening up with each other and saying, man, the, the devil, I fell into temptation here or I fell in here or I've never fell in temptation before ever before in this area but the devil got me here and we're able to talk to each other whether it's lust whether it's you know alcohol any addictions and having somebody to talk to is super important having somebody to share what you're struggling with so you can encourage each other and build each other up and say hey man don't do that again you know i want to encourage you not to do that say no next time don't fall into the temptation or the peer pressure or your buddies want to want to go do something that, that you feel in your spirit you feel convicted isn't right yeah. say no stand up that's sharing your faith that is telling all the people around you so it's standing firm in your faith and they'll they'll see that example and what you believe yeah. and i'd be more than happy to pray with anybody if you are struggling with something yeah. struggling with lust struggling with anything to break that chain yeah. uh be more than happy so feel yeah. free to come to me yeah I, I i was looking for the passage Appreciate in james it says i think it's in james confess your sins to one another so you may be healed yeah who are you confessing sins yeah. to on the link yeah and in matthew it says you know truly i tell you if two or three of you are gathered in my name whatever uh it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name there i am with them yeah so Open up to somebody. Exactly. It's don't worth don't it. hide in shame. The devil wants you to be in shame. Yeah. Post-COVID, the devil especially wants you to hide in shame. And we're not going to live that way. In the outdoor industry, we're not going to live that way at home. Uh, I can't stand to uh, encourage that kind of um, lack of biblical community together. So thanks for coming. I'm, I'm excited. If you want to talk, I'm, I'm here until as long as somebody wants to talk about faith kind of stuff or just fishing. But if you have to talk fishing, let's, let's wait for the expo. Um, thanks for coming. Take some biscuits. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah.